Hey everyone, in this video, as you can probably guess by the t-shirt and my little floppy disk here, um, I'm gonna talk about Azure Storage. And specifically, I want this to be pretty quick, but talking about, well look, there's different types of storage account. We have these performance options. What should I use for what service? And what are the cost implications? So that's really just the goal for this to focus on the types of storage account, the performance options, and how that actually impacts the billing. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated. So we can start off thinking about, well, we have this storage account. So we create a storage account in a certain region. So we pick a region, and we have a number of different options related to that storage account. If I actually go and look at the portal for when I create a storage account, we can see, well, one of the first things we actually pick is we have this performance type. So we have standard and premium. And then we have this account kind. Now, if we start off with just standard, we really see we have these options of storage v2, storage and blob storage. Essentially, in the world of standard, you're pretty much always just going to use storage v2. So blob storage added things like tiering, but that was added to storage v2 as well. So if we're talking about standard and the storage v2, that, that's going to be the go-to. And also notice you have these replication options. So those things all have an impact on what, what kind of the billing aspect and the resiliency of the data. So if we think about, well, we have all these different types of service. So let's start with the really easy ones first. So I can think about, well, queue and table. For queue and table, I'm just always going to use kind of standard performance. And I'm going to use that general purpose V2. There really is no point in using anything else for those. So that's just going to be my standard performance tier and then the general purpose V2 account type. So that's gonna give me those. Now from the charging perspective, and we can actually look at the pricing, what I'm basically gonna see for most of these services is I'm gonna pay, let's look at this, typically based on kind of the capacity I'm using and then the operations, the transactions against it. So if I just actually just quick table storage, for example, down here, I can see, well, what I pay for is based on the capacity and then that resiliency option. So if I have three copies in one data center, i.e. LRS, it's a certain cost. If it's then replicated to a paired region hundreds of miles away where there's another three copies, well, I pay a bit more money. So the capacity and the resiliency, that's one dimension of the cost. And then I'm paying, well, for the operations, the transactions against it. So that's when I think about kind of tables. Queues, well, once again, I'm really just paying for that storage capacity and then the types of operation against it. And that's gonna be a very common theme uh, to all of these things. So basically from a dollar perspective, it's kind of that capacity and kind of that resiliency, i.e. is it that LRS or GRS or ZRS, is it read access? And then kind of those operations. They're the things that I'm paying for. So it's all consumption based. That's kind of the key thing. I'm paying for the amount I'm using and the operations against it. So they're, they're kind of the easy ones. So we can think about, okay, well, then we have blob. Now there are really two primary types of blob. I can think there's kind of block blob and append blob, and then there is page. Page is very good for kind of that random access type operations with it. Now, once again, these could all run under standard general purpose v2, absolutely. But then additionally, what we get in kind of this world here, I get tiering. And you'll often see this idea, well, I can have a hot tier, I can have a cool tier, and then we can actually have kind of this archive. 
And remember, the archive is not live available. It's kind of offline. I have to bring it back. And the way these things work is that the hotter the tier, the more I pay for the capacity I'm using. So from a dollar perspective, I pay more for the capacity. But I pay less for kind of the, the operations, the transactions against it. So a hot tier, I pay the most to store it, but the least to do transactions against it. Core, I pay less for the storage, but I pay more for the transactions. And once again, when I think about that capacity, there's also this different kind of resiliency. So if we jump over again, if in our pricing we look at block blobs, well, here now we'll see, yep, yeah, we have, forget about premium for the time being, in just a standard storage account, I can have this hot, cool, and archive. And notice the price gets cheaper and cheaper as you move down from hot to cool to archive. That's the storage, I'm paying for what I store. And then the operations get more expensive. So hot is cheaper than cool for those kind of right operations. So that's kind of the point here is when I'm picking my tiers for the data I'm actively using and interact with a lot, hey, I'll put that in the hot tier. I'll pay more for the capacity, but I pay less for the actual transactions against it. As I'm using it less, but I still need to keep it, I can start moving it down to the cool tier. And then if I just need to keep it, but don't need live interactions with it, I can move it to archive for super, super cheap, but there'll be a delay in bringing it back. So that's really, and the archive, I can't do a pend. Uh, that's just for block blobs. So this is all still within standard. This is all within that standard uh, general purpose V2. Now, then we can start to get into, well, then we have this performance thing. So then we have the go faster performance option. Now, to use the performance option, I actually use a different type of storage account. We actually are going to use a block blob type. So if we actually look at the portal, and we go and look at our storage account create options. Remember, when it's standard, I just see storage v2, storage v1, and blob. We're only ever really going to use storage v2. If I change it to premium, my options now change. I still have general purpose V2, and we'll get to that. But now I have block blob, that's different from blob, and file storage. So it's now this block blob storage account, if I create that of type premium, well now I can store those kind of um, block blobs in there. So now that's where this premium column comes in. So I'm going to pay even more money now for the actual storage. It's more expensive even than hot. I'm going to get lower latencies. It's something like a 10 times reduction on latency. And also when you look at kind of the right operations, um, they get cheaper as well. So once again, you're paying, paying less for those interactions. And once again, with that performance block blob, I'm paying for the capacity I'm using and those kind of transactions, those operations. But that's only for kind of those, um, the block blob. I'm not using that for the page. So that's where the performance comes in for block blob. Um, I want to, again, get the lowest latencies. It's really hugely interacting. I'm going to pay more for the capacity, but I pay even less for the transactions. Now, between the hot core and archive, I can use kind of blob lifecycle management because it's within the same storage account. This is a different storage account. I can't use lifecycle management to move between hot and kind of performance. I would have to write something to kind of copy the data between them. And then you kind of have this page option. Now, we tend to use the page blobs. I'm actually going to move that out. Um, less these days. We used to use it to store kind of disks. Well, now we have managed disks. That's the preferred way to actually have that um, with um, my virtual machines and even other types of service. But still, 
there is the actual idea of a performance for page. And this is where I can kind of do this, I'll run it over here, performance. And this is where I would use a general purpose V2. So that is for those page blobs. Doesn't really apply to anything else. If uh, regular block blobs don't do anything in a performance general purpose V2. Files don't do anything in a performance general purpose V2. This applies to kind of my page unmanaged disks, my page blobs. So if we go and look now at our pricing for this, here we can see if we look at page blobs, well with the page blobs, we have some different options. There's that concept of kind of the premium, premium page blobs where it's a certain size. So I pay actually based on the provisioned size. And then there's obviously the standard, where I just pay for the amount of data. And then there's certain operations against those disks. So that's where I might use the premium option for a general purpose V2, is if I'm not using managed disks, but I want those premium page blobs. But here again, you're actually now paying for the provisioned size. So there, there's a difference on this. So my payment is not the data I'm actually written into it. It's based on the provisioned size of that page blob uh, I've created on there. And then again, kind of those transactions against it. And then again, under general purpose, still standard, I can absolutely do files. And just like everything else for the files, guess what? Under standard, standard is always just really consumption based. I'm just gonna pay for, hey, the amount of data I'm actually storing. You can see here, again, it gets cheaper as you go down their tiers. But I pay less for the actual transactions the higher up in the tiers I have. So this is now all within that standard kind of tier. Once again, in this standard general purpose V2, my files, I have those tiers again. And we have the idea of that kind of transaction optimized. We have the idea of just kind of the regular, I think you called it hot, and then cool. Let's just check the naming. Yeah, hot, transaction hot and cool. And just like those other services, again, I pay more for the kind of capacity and then I pay less for the actual kind of transactions, the operations against it. But this is all within that kind of general purpose V2 and I am paying for the amount of data I'm actually writing. That's kind of the key point. Now, additionally, then we have this performance option and we do have, if we go and look, this files option. So here, if I create my storage account, I have file storage for premium. So now what this is actually going to do is I have this perf, I'm choosing file. This is now gonna bill me based on a provisioned share size. So what happens now is under this performance file storage account, I create shares, and those shares, I pick a provisioned size, and that's what I pay for, not the amount of data, I pay for the provision size, because what is tied to this is for every kind of gigabyte I provision, I get a certain amount of kind of IOPS and throughput. And so we might create a bigger share because I need higher IOPS and throughput. I don't need the space, but I need the performance. And so that's what's kind of fairly unique about file storage in the performance. I am not paying for the amount of data I write. I'm paying for the provisioned size of the share. And we can kind of see that. So over here, for example, if I actually quickly look at a files premium, so this one I've created, and file shares, when I create the file share, notice I'm putting in a provisioned capacity. And this is telling me 
hey, look, you are billed based on that provisioned size. And it's showing me what my performance is going to be. Now I'm going to get a baseline and a burst. Now the bigger I make this, you'll see up goes my IO and my throughput. And that's what I'm paying for. So even if I leave that empty, I'm going to be paying for two terabytes. So that's really kind of a key differentiator when I think about the file storage. I'm paying for the amount I provision because that ties in directly to, well, what is the performance I'm going to get? So I might create it bigger because I need that higher performance. So that's really how we can think about breaking apart um, the different types of storage account that, that we may utilize. So for the most part, I can kind of think about, well, just the standard performance, I'll use the general purpose V2. I can do queues, I can do tables, I can do block blobs, append blobs, I get the tiering, I can have page blobs in there, and I can have files. Within files, I can have those tiers. And we're always paying in standard for the capacity we're actually using. When we then ratchet up, I need the performance type. Well, yes, I can still do performance general purpose V2, but that's really just for those page blobs. And it's on those provision kind of page blobs that I create on there. Again, most of us now are not going to do that. We're going to use managed disks, either a standard hard disk drive, standard SSD, premium SSD, or ultra disk. That's the preferred approach. So let me get into the two kind of specialized ones, the performance block blob, um, high performance, lower latencies. We are paying for the capacity, what we're actually doing, and the transactions. Performance file storage, well then we pay for the provisioned size of the share. We set that when we create the share. That is what we pay for. And that gives us a tie-in directly to the IOPS and throughput we actually get. So that was it. Remember, you also do for these capacities, we have the different resiliency options around kind of the standard, not so much with the performance options. That will obviously impact the pricing as well. But that's it. Again, quite a few people were kind of asked and were confused about, well, what do these things mean? When should I use what account standard? You're going to use general purpose V2 99.999% of the time. Premium, I'm typically going to use for the block blob or files when I need those high performing options. But just be super aware, I pay for the provision size of my file share. So if you go and create a huge share, um, just because you're thinking in the future I might want it that big, you're paying for that size, no matter how small the data you've written. So I hope that was useful. Until next time, take care.